How much would your life change if you knew every single time someone told you a lie? Even if that someone was you. Lies like you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you can't own a business, and you definitely will never make more than you did in your old corporate job. Get ready to be proactive, passionate, productive, and oh so profitable in a way you've never before experienced by opening your eyes to the big fat lies. Now, here's the host of Big Fat Lies, business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Oh my goodness. Happy Friday, you guys. It is time for Big Fat Lies. So what are the big fat lies that are stopping you from being so happy, so healthy, and so wealthy in your life? and business. This is my invitation for you guys. Join me live in the live studio audience at Inspired Choices Network and just come and listen. Here's the thing, like it's really time to come out of the closet about what we don't know about the word no. And I have so many things to share with you today. Like there's a completely different point of view that's available with no. And do you let one little no stop you? Are you willing to hear no over and over again? What does no really mean? (laughs) What does it really mean? Why do I want you to know? Why do I want you to know? Because most of the people that work with me that come into my consultancy, that come to work with me, have heard no hundreds of times, thousands of times, maybe even tens of thousands of times. And so it may have done a number on your operating system. Your operating system might be burnt out from hearing no from the incorrect people the incorrect people. And we're going to talk about that today. But why do you want to listen? Why do you want to listen? Like, who the hell am I? And why do you want to listen to me? Well, I have so many success stories to share with you. A lot of them about energy work, a lot of them about using your own body as a GPS to make choices for what's correct for you, a lot of them about conscious business, a lot of them about building wealth as a female business owner or as a part of a female-led business. And why do I care? I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. So basically, the next deal was how our family kept food on the table. And there was a ton, a ton of really not helpful ways of dealing with no, like a ton. And so today, I want to embrace you with the fact that no really doesn't mean much. It just doesn't. And so, you know, if you're like, oh, I hate hearing no, I hate asking questions, I hate making an offer, I hate being vulnerable to hear no, then you are in the right place. If no stops you, you're in the right place. If no is something that makes you feel less than, you are in the correct place. And, you know, I've been doing this type of work, transformational work now. I started in 2014 uh, part-time, and then I moved into 2015 full-time. I used to facilitate for a company called Access Consciousness. And so some of my connections have taken Access Consciousness classes with me. Some of my connections have taken Access Consciousness classes globally. And then what happened was I heard more and more and more, you know, Jennifer, we like it when you come up with your own stuff. We like listening to you. I just feel better, Jennifer, when I spend time with you. So I want to remind you that this class is just as much a transmission as it is a class. And so, you know, people tell me over and over, I just feel better when I spend time with you. So maybe just to take a second and check into your body. And like, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling? So if zero out of 10 is 
you know, I'm listening to you from my bed and I'm hoping I'm going to feel better, then just acknowledge that. And if 10 out of 10, you're feeling freaking great and you want to be a 20 out of 10 or a 50 out of 10 or a 100 out of 10, then that's awesome too. And I'm going to check back with you at the end of the show and you can let me know or let you know that you have received the transmission today about what to do when the world says no, what to do when the world says no, because it doesn't really, really matter what happens when the world says no out there. What happens in here is the most important thing when the world says no. And, you know, it's super, super important in the grand scheme of things for you to be vulnerable. And we're going to talk about this today enough to hear a no from someone like how you're feeling. What you want to get across to them is your product or whatever it is of the conversation your um what do I want to say yeah it's basically like a product you know so it's like here's something that I would like to tell you and if they receive it then they receive it and you know here's something that I would like to offer you if they receive it then they receive it but in the grand scheme of things their response and we're going to talk about that in the show today really oh, has I'll Facebook that I Facebook land Oops, I wonder what's happening here. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it really has nothing to do with you. Like super nothing to do with you, what their response is. Unless you're being a complete dick. <laughs> Which maybe in the moment you could be. I mean, it's possible. You don't have to be perfect all the time either. And we're definitely going to be talking about that today. So what I would recommend is for you to grab something to drink, grab, you know, some electrolytes, grab some wine, grab a beer, grab a kombucha, whatever it is that you would like to drink. Hydrate, 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 because we're going to go through this today. So the first thing that I would love to bring up with no, and we do talk about this a ton on this show, is in order to make a positive change in your life, you are going to have to commit to the outcome of the positive change. So say you have difficulty presenting what it is that you do for a living, or say you have difficulty asking people to do business with you, or say you have difficulty asking, you know, for friendship or intimacy or whatever it is that you might have difficulty asking for. A positive change, you have to commit to a positive change. So like, take all of that, whatever that's bringing up, and we're just going to take it and we're just going to sit it over here for the purposes of this show. So whatever you've done before, whatever experiences that you've had, whether you've had huge embarrassments or whether you've had like huge vulnerability that you've offered to people and they've been like, I don't want that. <laughs> Let's just sit that over here and pay attention to what is possible for you in the future with no. So maybe we can set an intention for this show today. Like if you could get anything out of this show today, what would you like to receive? What would you like to receive? So we've got uh, someone in the studio audience as a five out of 10 today. And oh, nice. We've got a couple people here. So happy to be here live. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you for those people who have taken the time to be with me live today. It always adds to my experience when I have somebody in the live studio audience. So if you are able to meet me at one o'clock Pacific Standard Time, four o'clock Eastern Standard Time for Big Fat Lies is super, super important to me. And your feedback is always valuable. Whatever platform that you end up listening on, if you could write it in the comments, hashtag replay or hashtag live, wherever you are, you might be on the Inspired Choices app. You can take me anywhere you like <laughs> on the Inspired Choices app and listen live or listen on the replay to Big Fat Lies. And why am I dedicated to you knowing what your big fat lies are? Well, what I see over and over again is there's a simplicity 
to the lies that people tell themselves. It doesn't have to be complicated. You know, and the lies can be from anywhere. It's, it, the lies might even be agreeing with someone when you don't actually need to agree with them. You can be like, hmm, that doesn't work for me. And you don't have to agree with them. So I wonder what you would like to receive today from the show. Maybe just put that in the chat wherever you are. So I have a ton, a ton of modalities that, that I have collected over the years for energetic healing. And I do that hands-on when we're allowed to do that again. I've traveled the world, had amazing workshops in gorgeous places. I've uh, like Avery Stone Circle, which is right by Stonehenge and is a much bigger henge than Stonehenge and, you know, uh, um, Glastonbury abbey and you know just like gorgeous places on the planet i've had workshops where we did a hands-on healing and i notice that bodies are afraid to be told no they're kind of afraid and so maybe have a look at that in your body where in your body is afraid to be told no so maybe have a look at that for yourself where so is it in your root is it in your sacral is it in your solar plexus is it in your spleen is it in your g center which is your liver is it in your throat is it in your third eye is it in your crown like where is it <laughs> Is it actually in your aura? Is it outside of your aura? Yeah, so we've got somebody in the audience here saying third eye. Yeah, so with a third eye, quote unquote, fear of being told no, it can be that you're going into all the future eventualities of being told no. So that's kind of naughty. When you think about it so people who are adept psychically adept can also be psychically snoopy and it's naughty <laughs> i'm super psychic and i have been super naughty over the years going into these future eventualities where oh well if i do this then they're gonna do that and then i'll do this and then they're gonna do that so playing chess with the future eventualities and then coming up with your version of them telling you no. Does that feel true to you? Do you do that? Do you play chess with the future eventualities coming from your third eye or any of the other parts of your body that are completely adept? And how kind is that to you? Like, is that kind to you at all to go into these future eventualities and come up with the fact, and I'm using air quotes here for those of you who are listening, like, it's not a fact until somebody actually tells you no, they haven't told you no, and you don't even know why they would tell you no if you don't actually have a conversation with them and i'll tell you what i'm very psychically adept very very psychically adept and in the past i've definitely done this you know had a psychic conversation with somebody's body and made up my own mind that i wasn't going to pursue business with them or wasn't going to pursue you know co-creation with them because i'd already had a psychic conversation with their body that's not fair, you guys. You get that, right? It's totally, one, it's naughty. Two, it's not fair. And three, maybe they do need to have an actual physical conversation with you in order to be able to get to a yes or get to a no or get to a no, not now. Think about that. It might be a no, not now. And I remember... Gosh, I, you know, I have such a big business background. I was like 22 years old when I got my real estate license. And so I've been in all different facets of real estate, banking and finance. I was in banking before that. So banking, real estate and finance um, and investments for, you know, 
basically all of my corporate career until I started to move into, you know, conscious business and facilitating business owners and, you know, doing all of this energy healing work. And the reason why I went into it was because I was driving myself mental with my own nervous system trying to be in business. You know, it just, it wasn't helpful to me. It was actually really, you know, I was in property management, which is a very unkind career, (laughs) especially for someone who is as sensitive as me. So after the break, we're going to talk about more about receiving no, more about receiving no after the break. So you can join us in the chat room on Inspired Choices Network if you are watching live on Facebook and learn more about what to do when the world is telling you no. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis and this is the Big Fat Live Show. See you over on the other side. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that. How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jenniferkramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness, we are back. We are back. So one of the things uh, that someone in the chat room was mentioning um, is energy types energy types. And so recently, uh, over the last couple of years, I've been studying human design and gene keys. And so there's energy profile types, energy profile types. And so depending on your energy profile type, you may not be the person who's asking. You may not be the person who's asking. So it may be that you have been a projector energy type running around asking people to do business with you. And instead, you should have been waiting for people to invite you to ask them to do business with you. So it is confusing. It can be confusing. And there is a customized approach to how you are generating business, depending on what energy type you are. And so I just sort of want to leave that out there, that there are specific energy types. And so wherever you're listening, if you put your energy type in the chat, uh, what I can do is I'll go later, look for those comments, and I will give you a customized suggestion for your energy type. I'm not going to give you a whole reading. I'll give you a customized suggestion on what you could be doing to generate business. Now, one of the things that I notice with projectors is that they do need a system that consistently invites them to invite people to do business with them. And that's not saying that manifestors Manifesting generators, generators and reflectors don't need a system because you all need a system to be generating consistent leads and consistent traffic to whatever it is that you're doing. And if you are afraid of hearing no, then 
the likelihood of you continuing to generate those leads, continuing to ask people to do business with you is really slim, you guys, really, really slim. And so it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad when you think about it. You know, I want there to be a balance of you nurturing yourself, you know, like not taking too many blows to the head. <laughs> But also being out there in the game of whatever it is that you're doing. So most of the people who listen to me are entrepreneurs, they're founders, they're business owners, um, or they're high level executives, you know, they're, they're change makers, they're decision makers. And so we don't want you to have so many blows to the head that you are shy to present whatever it is that you're presenting. Now, it can be that you just need a customized approach. And then when you hear no, you have the ability to be able to start to convert the nose. Now, I'm not telling you, we're not talking about, you know, let's like old school Brian Tracy, you know, like um, objection handling, uh, conversion, you know, like back in the 90s, when we used to listen to the tapes in the car as we were driving from listing appointments to listing appointments, or, you know, realtor open house, I'm not talking about that. What I am talking about is that no, can mean a ton of different things. Well, one, it can be, can mean no, not right now. It can mean no, not right now. And so you need to clarify that with your audience, you know, so it can be no, not right now. And so what you can do is you can say to the person who's telling you no, oh, can you tell me, tell me more about that? And then they have to clarify their no. Or what makes you tell me no? How come you're telling me no? You can flirt your way into getting more information out of a no. And please just give yourself permission to ask for more information about the no. Because you can say, hey, or you can ask. You can be like, oh, well, is it a no right now? Or is it a, are you pretty sure it's a hard no for me? And like, maybe don't even do that second part. You're like, oh, okay. Is it going to be a no in the future? <laughs> Are you sticking to the no, Bob? Are you sticking to the no? And, you know, just know, I think from the bottom of your heart, most of the time what people are offering, and I'm going to know this about you, is that what you're offering to people is a valuable service. It's a valuable commodity. It's a valuable friendship. It's a valuable connection. It's a valuable product. It's something that you believed in enough to create it. So do you know that about yourself, that you believed enough in the thing that you're offering to people to have created it? Because that's super important. If you don't believe enough in the thing that you've created, like if you just take it out of your heart, just take it out of your heart and sit it in front of you and ask it questions. Do I believe enough in you that I have created you? You know, just for example, so my Big Fat Lies show, if I was quizzing her and say, oh, Big Fat Lies, do I believe enough in you to have created you? absolutely I really really believe in big fat lies I believe that people need to know the big fat lies that are ruling their lives one of which is that no is a final answer <laughs> in many cases it's not now I can feel all of you you know me too people trying to like worm your way in we're not talking about me too we're talking about, you know, opportunities, you know, so say you have a house for sale and people come to the open house, you know, if they say no, does that mean they hate the home? Absolutely not. Maybe they don't need a five bedroom home. Maybe they're just snooping to find out what their home is worth. And in many cases, if you have an online business or a product driven business or a service driven business, some people come into discovery calls with you just to sniff you out to find out how to sell their stuff. 
so think about that. Like it probably would be a good idea for you to be happy with them saying no. And also let's flip it. Like when you say no, what does that mean? Like when you say no to an opportunity, what does that mean? Like how can you nourish yourself by saying no more to business? Like I have a whole entire show. I think I actually have two shows on this topic. <laughs> one of them's called You Can't Say No to Clients. And I think another one is something about like you can't say no to money. And so I'm going to invite you to go on to the Inspired Choices Network and look up Big Fat Lies and go to my archives and look for those shows. Because one says you can't say no to new clients. And then another one is... I think you can't say no to money or something like that. And so I think what happens for people is they're so caught up in one, you know, this product or service or your new website or this new thing that you've decided everybody needs. And so when they say no, you get heartbroken about it. And it doesn't even really matter. It's like, okay, well, you know, do you get mad at every ball? Like say you're playing tennis or whatever, and somebody's got one of those lobster machines and they're shooting the balls at you. Are you mad every time you miss one? Or are you like, try a little harder, move differently, ask questions about why it is that you're not able to sit, hit every single ball back over the fence again. And I would say for business, it's super important for you to be agile, super, super important for you to be agile. And so if, you know, the products and services that you are offering right now have a close rate of like, 20% or 15% instead of like 80, 90, 100% on qualified leads, then what is it that you would like to do to change it? Like, are you aware of what needs to change? And at a soul level, at a psychic level, it's actually possible to get the information and, and talk to those products as entities talk to those services as entities you know just for example me talking to the big fat lie show and asking her like hey what do you want to talk about next hey what are people looking for hey what's exciting to facilitate and I do that every single week every single week I'm like okay well you know what's out on the ethers and on the ethers this week was you know I had some personal experiences where something quite important to me uh, came back as a no. And I was like, hmm, well, what does that mean? Like, what does that really mean? And so I've been really processing it this week. And I wanted to bring it to you. And, you know, give you some feedback that no isn't always no. It can be, you know, back in the day, no was like next opportunity next opportunity. So N O as next opportunity. And so for you, like think for instance, when was the last time someone told you no, and it felt like, well, it was kind of a bit heartbreaking, heartbreaking that they told you no. And even, you know, like maybe you didn't even really care, but the no felt heartbreaking. Like think about that for yourself. Just think, you know, come up with that. And what is the next opportunity that's available for you if you didn't make the no so important? Like if the no was like, ah, next opportunity. Like what is the next opportunity? Think about that for yourself. Because as a person who has a body, who has an energetic being who has an inner child that needs to be nourished if you spend a lot of time banging your head against the wall about people who are telling you no instead of being able to move into the next opportunity that's available for you like it might not be with that person who's telling you no it might be with somebody completely different that is not going to tell you no and if you spend a lot of time thinking about oh well that person told me no 
So, you know, there must be something wrong with my product or service. There must be something wrong with me. Maybe I had lettuce in my teeth, like whatever it is. What if you don't care? Like if you got to the point where you didn't have any Fs to give about it, if you're like, okay, well, that person told me no, how can I refine my offer? Like if you're ballsy enough, you can actually go to the person who told you no and ask them, hey, I really wanted to work with you. I really thought that I had customized this offer so that we could work together. What would it take? What could I put in my offer? How could I refine my offer? What do you suggest to me? And maybe they will be gutsy enough to give you the information that you need to refine your offer and really start to you know, hit way more of those balls across the fence and close way more clients. So we are heading into another break. This is the Big Fat Lies show. We are talking about what to do when the world keeps telling you no. So I'm going to invite you to join me after the break. I've got so much more about no and why it's actually good for you to receive a ton of no's, whether you believe me or not. See you after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're just joining live now, we are talking about receiving more no's. <laughs> We're not talking about objection handling. We are not talking about converting no's into yeses, strong arming our clients into our services, our products, our business, whatever it is. And, you know, back in the day, back in the 90s, <laughs> driving in between listing appointments or whatever, listening to Brian Tracy and Zig Ziglar and, you know, all of these uh, transformational trainers. I really, really want to invite you to, it can be something completely different in your world. If you are willing to receive dozens and dozens and dozens of no's, and you're willing to actually deal out dozens and dozens and dozens of no's. My producer, pulled this show for me that I was talking about called I Can't Say No to New Clients. And that was December 18th of last year. And yes, you can. <laughs> and they can say no to you. And so what if, what if we could just flip this on its head? Like, what if we could just flip it on its head? What if every time someone has said no to you, it has been a blessing in disguise? <laughs> that saying, like, rejection is God's protection. And so what if every single time someone says no to you, 
the opportunity is a new opportunity. It's a new opportunity to work with someone differently, a new opportunity to create a different product or service or recalibrate a product or service so that people, the right people, will say yes to it. And if you're a regular listener of the show, I've been talking to you guys about getting in the right rooms getting in the right rooms with the right type of people and have the right type of people say yes to you. And when we're talking about, you know, a luxury style business, people don't waste your time if they pay you decent money for what it is that you're doing. I have had way more trouble with a $97 offer or an $88 offer than I have ever had when I charge people $50,000, $100,000, those people do not waste my time because they don't want their time wasted either. So think about that for yourself. It may be true that when you try to discount your services or you try to like come up with something clever, the type of clientele that you're attracting aren't really the type of people that you want to work with. And just think about that. Like, I remember back in the day, um, you know, I learned all of these uh, hands-on energetic healing modalities and, you know, I was getting like super great results. People were like, you know, stopping having migraines, you know, they were sleeping better. They were, you know, connecting better with their universe, like just like a whole bunch of different magical things were happening. And, you know, the, the, you know, sort of the industry standard was, you know, like $97 or something like that for an hour's worth of hands-on energetic healing. And I could not sell those. Like I couldn't sell them. (laughs) It was so weird. And, you know, I had all of these client testimonials and, you know, it was just so weird. Every time I tried to like have a discount service, I could not sell it. And so um, somebody suggested to me, oh, well, maybe you're not charging enough. And so what I ended up doing was three Xing. So I went from like 97 to 297. And no problem. Absolutely no problem. The type of client that would pay $297 for that service was a completely different group of people. So consider this, are the type of people who are telling you no, your ideal client? Are they willing to pay you what it is that your services uh, would like to be charged for? You know, are they, is, are you a luxury service? And, you know, like, what would it take for you to be a luxury service? Maybe you're a luxury service and you don't even know you are. So I think it's really time to get down to brass tacks with like, why is it, you know, why not like making you wrong, but just being super freaking clear. Like, what's the no? What are the ingredients that people are saying no to? And, um, you know, like a properly constructed discovery call with someone where you run them through, you know, like, like a gap process, if you guys know what that is, it's like helps the client identify what's missing that your facilitation or your product or your service or your store helps them with you know, discovering what the gap is that your service provides is super, super important, you know, because you might have 10 different gaps that you fulfill on, you know, I tend to work with people who are in overwhelm, they're in active burnout. And so my consultancy is multifaceted. So, you know, if I present a gap that has, you know, these different five different things and three out of the different five things are not for that person then they're going to say no to me and it was because I wasn't listening I wasn't listening I wasn't paying attention so what can happen and we talked about this at the beginning of the show you've already had this conversation in your head with them and you're not freaking listening to them when you're having the conversation when they're in front of you because you're all ready to present your product or your service or your thing. 
so does that feel true? I might be flicking some of you right between the eyes. <laughs> and I'm good at that. I want you to do well. I really want you to do well. And so being present to the ingredient of what the no is made of. You know, because sometimes people say no, but really what they need is some time to digest. And, you know, especially 50% of the population, 50% of the population are emotional authority. And so, you know, if you know that about them, depending on, you know, what type of work that you do, you could even ask them and say, you know, are, are you an emotional person? Do you need to like sleep on things? And they'll tell you yes or no. And if they're not, then they might be able to give you a yes in the call. They might be able to. But I also think, you know, especially if they're planning on working with you over a longer period of time, which if you have a transformational type of business, I recommend totally recommend you know especially just thinking uh one of the people who's here live today uh helps people have um new staff she's got a business called uh i have people for that and you know so a long-term period that includes making sure that this is the correct person and also helping on board that correct person can be part of a deeper level of service and so, you know, thinking about that for you, like, what is the deeper level of service that you can provide that you may not be providing that can move you over into a higher priced luxury model that people would like to say yes to instead of discounting your services? I've never been successful at that never ever been successful at discounting services and so i think there's a lot more people out there who are hearing no because they're trying to you know undercut the bottom line and their body is not having it their body is uh, transmitting the no to the client and then the client is picking up the wow jennifer really doesn't want to do these body work sessions for 97 dollars. so i'm not freaking going to pay for a 97 dollar body work session from her i'll wait until you know she takes these specials off and then i'll just continue to pay her the 300 bucks that she normally charges so think about that for yourself I charge more than that now, by the way. So I've got somebody in the audience that says, how much of our assumptions are actually creating the no? A lot of them, a lot of them. And so thinking about that for yourself, we do on this show talk about Buddhist beginner's mind a ton, a ton. And so if you don't know what Buddhist beginner's mind is, I highly recommend you research it. Highly recommend you do your own due diligence on Buddhist beginner's mind. But basically what it is, is you're opening your eyes in a new timeline where you're irresistible. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Just open your eyes in a new timeline where you are irresistible, where like nothing, all the no's that you've heard in previous timelines previous lifetimes just they're not there you're just irresistible now so you can even ask that like um you know how i talk about parking spot mojo activate if you're a regular listener this is a an experiment that i recommend that you do called parking spot mojo activate so before you know two three minutes before you actually need the parking spot you say out loud parking spot mojo activate and what it will do is it will give you a parking spot that is basically in front of the restaurant or in front of the grocery store or in front of the jazz club like wherever you're going you will get the proper parking spot if you ask out loud for it now what you can do is you could say irresistible me activate irresistible me activate and so think about that. Do you have any points of view about what would happen if you were completely irresistible? <laughs> I kind of do. I'm like, mm, I have to be careful where I aim that thing. <laughs> so think about that for yourself. Do you feel like 
it's easier for you to be resistible, like overcoming objections, overcoming resistance. Are you so accustomed to that, that if we transmuted it, if we flipped it on its head and turned it into you being completely irresistible, that your life would change in a way that's not actually good for you I think about that does that feel true to you that if you were completely irresistible it would cause more problems than you having to be resisted and overcoming objections and so if that's true then I wonder if you would be willing to experiment with being completely irresistible so I'm going to in invite you to join me after that I'm getting so many downloads about being irresistible how freaking fun is that so I want you to join me after the break this is big fat lies my name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis we are on inspired choices network have you ever said to yourself I knew I shouldn't do that how did that feel what did you make that mean about you business coach shaman and seer Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious Passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. We are almost three quarters of the way through the show or maybe we're a little bit over three quarters of the way through the show and we have been on a journey, a complete journey. So if you are just joining us, we started to talk about how no can mean a ton of different things. And it can mean no, not right now, or no, I don't have enough information, or no, I don't trust you, or no, it's going too quickly for me. Like there's so many different no's that you can be receiving. And so it's super important for you to ask a question and help clarify what the no is about. Because if they need more information, if they need more time, if they don't trust you enough, then you closing them or overcoming objections or you know any of the bullshit stuff that was like from the 90s like it's just not fair you really honestly do not want to close a prospect who you have converted from a no into a yes by objection handling or some sort of coercion we don't do that anymore we actually need to work with clients who trust us completely and what happens is when the clients trust us completely, they will start to refer gold business. Like all of my referral business, I just close. I'm just like, okay, well, what did you think you were going to get from me? And the people will be like, here's all the things that me and my friend, who was the referral source, uh, were talking about. And she says that you can totally do this. And I totally want it. And, you know, so it becomes so easy to refer that business to you when you have a really gold relationship with your clients, your previous clients, uh, your active clients, people who have been sniffing around your business and, you know, super, super important for you to use those previous clients, not use them, but actually, you know, um, what do I want to say? You resource them resource your previous clients and you know even ask them like hey what made you say yes to me what made you say yes to this opportunity what made you say yes 
because the more words that you can get from your clients about what made you say yes to this, how did you get great results? You know, because not everybody gets great results from whatever work it is that you do, but the people who are working with you in whatever it is that you are doing and that are receiving great results, that is a data mine source for you to be able to get more information about how to get to yes. You guys realize that, right? You know, if five people have said yes to you, then those five people may have commonalities. If 50 people have said yes to the, you, they may have commonalities. They will have commonalities. And so it's really, really super important for you to find out what those commonalities are. Now, I also want to remind you that when you say no to an opportunity, what does that mean to you and for you? Because if you can drill down and dial down on most often why you say no to opportunities. Now, for me, freedom is huge. So if working with somebody feels like it undermines my freedom, I will say no every day, all day. <laughs> Even if they're like, oh, I'm going to pay you $100,000, I'm going to pay you a half a million dollars, I'm going to have to pay you, you know, I'm going to pay you $10 million, you know, like there's all of these stories about these high level um, uh, assistants to these you know, world's best people. And the, you know, they're like, oh, I don't want to sleep by myself. Can you sleep in my bed with me? And, you know, I mean, like everything that I would consider compromising my freedom. So thinking about that for yourself, like there may be commonalities between what you say no to and then what people are commonly saying no to you for. And so just for example, does, is it a freedom thing? You know, you might find something, uh, might find something there. I think I would really, really look at that if you were going to get deeper in your journey of being really, really comfortable with people telling you no. You know, what if you're like, okay, well, that was a ball. Okay, here's another ball. You know, just like really, it's just data. It's really just data. And so if you can data mine those no's and get really great information from the no's and be really ballsy, be really ballsy and just be like, hmm, okay, well, I super love you and I super love the idea of doing business with you. So, you know, I thought we were going to get to some place today where you would say yes to me. So what could you say yes to might even be a really great question. What could you say yes to? Like, but be clear. As we were also talking about being super irresistible, like what if you could just activate it? Like irresistible me, activate. <laughs> and what would that mean to you? Like, what would that mean for you? Like every time you ask somebody to do something for you or work with you or spend time with you or anything with you or for you, they always said yes. What would that mean about you? Like I find that especially with women, um, you know, it's such a journey, you know, like most of us are pretty freaking irresistible, I would say. And then we like put up these roadblocks to having, you know, sort of being resistible. <laughs> so weird. So if you're spending a lot of time thinking that people are going to resist you, that it's, it's difficult to say yes to you, then your universe is always going to match your expectations of yourself. So if you can go in with Buddhist beginner's mind every morning, you activate the irresistible you and then start asking, start asking questions like, um, I've done so many of these exercises where, you know, trying to get people to say no to me and, you know, being irresistible that for me, it just feels like fun. It doesn't feel like war. It doesn't feel like you know, it doesn't feel scary to me to get somebody to say yes to me or get somebody to say no to me. Like it's just data. It really is just data. 
And so what do I want to leave you with? What I want to leave you with is that you can actually trust the universe. You really can. You can trust the universe. And the universe is only bringing you data. You aren't worth less because somebody told you no. You're not worth more because somebody told you yes. And so I really hope that you're feeling much better. Let me know how you're feeling. Thank you for listening to Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Join us next week at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until next week, Jennifer invites you to laugh at limitation and live life delightfully by opening your eyes to the Big Fat Lies.